And back to a Fox News alert. Overnight, six major world powers reaching a nuclear deal with Iran. But did the U.S. completely cave in? What does this mean for U.S. foreign policy moving forward? What does it mean for Israel? A lot at stake. Let's ask 2016 presidential candidate, Republican <coughs> senator from South Carolina, Lindsey Graham. Thank Good you. morning. I, I want to. We're going to go through this in detail, sure. the substance. But first of all, right. president threw down the gauntlet and mm -hmm. said, "If you and Congress, various leaders, try to stop this and pass a bill to stop it." he's going to veto it. Can you override that veto? Yeah, I think so. I think this is such a bad deal. It'd be hard to muster 20 votes because what the president has done, he's taken the world's most destabilizing power, one of our chief antagonists, a country that's killed hundreds of Americans in Iraq, and he's guaranteed that they're going to become a nuclear nation. Instead of dismantling their program, this program, this deal locks in their nuclear program. On that point real quick, I had noticed the president said Iran is further away from getting nuclear we uh, weapons. Very yeah. important. Well, further away, he didn't say we're yeah. stopping them. Here's what's happened. Every uh, Sunni Arab nation is going to see this as an inevitable outcome. The worst possible outcome of a deal would be two things to create a nuclear arms race in the Mideast where Sunni Arabs feel threatened by the deal. They will. Saudis and others are going to try to get This guarantees that they will have an industrial-sized nuclear program, and by the mere passage of time, they can break out and have a weapon. So all the Arab nations are going to feel threatened by this deal. This could be a death sentence for the state of Israel. You've given mm -hmm. Israel's chief antagonist the people who hate Israel the most, the capability to develop a nuclear weapon, you put Israel in a box and every element of Israeli political life rejects this I want deal. to get your reaction to a couple quick points on Iran sure. and we'll get to the presidential campaign. Sure. IEA, the inspection agency here, they get, if they want to visit a nuclear site, they call Iran, yeah. they put in a request, and then Iran has 14 days yeah. to respond. Big loophole? This is a joke, but here's what you need to remember. Instead of dismantling their program, we're ensuring they become a nuclear nation. Every Arab who is threatened by an Iranian nuclear program is going to get a nuke of their own. Israel now is in a position where the people who chant death to Israel can actually make it happen. We're giving them $18 billion. They will put it mm -hmm. in their war machine. At the end of the day, this is the most destabilized. This is like taking a can of gasoline and throwing it on a fire. This okay. is a deal for a deal's sake. Let's get to the campaign. Sure. Uh, Donald Trump not happy with you this morning. You <clears throat> said he's uh, number one, a wrecking ball for the Republican Party yeah. uh, in terms of outreach to Hispanic voters sure. and others. And you said, quote, it would be hard to get elected president if you can't represent represent a mattress company. Yeah, yeah. Uh, isn't he talking straight, though, on some of these issues? No, I think he's, I think he's not talking straight. I think he's uh, talking in a horrible way. I don't believe, maybe you do, and I don't think you do, that most of the 11 million illegal immigrants here are rapists and drug dealers. I think most are hardworking people that come from poor and corrupt countries to make a better life. And we do need to secure our border. We need to create order out of chaos. But he made a statement about a group of people, and here's the problem, the dreamers. These are kids who are brought here at a young age. They've grown up here. This is the only home they know. They've had brothers and sisters since they've been here who are legal citizens. You're basically telling their brothers and sisters that their older brother, their mother and father are rapists and drug dealers. This is offensive. It's not true. And we should push back as a party. Polls are not the only barometer and mm -hmm. they're not the most important barometer. Sure. But Donald Trump's been rising in the polls. Sure. You're still stuck pretty low. Yeah. How do you turn that around? Well, at the end of the day, it's July 2015. The only thing that matters to me is how I do in Iowa and New Hampshire. And this idea that you can't get on a debate stage because of polling numbers is absurd. If my dad had been president and my brother had been president, I'd be doing better. If I had a show on NBC, I'd be doing better. If I'd been a Fox commentator, I'd be doing better. So here's what I'm asking the Republican Party to do. Allow my voice. I think I've earned the right to speak on foreign policy. Whether I do well or not will be up to me. Let Carly Fiorina and John Kasich Put us all up, pick a good nominee, mm -hmm. challenge each other. This idea of national polling, I think, is a bad idea. Senator Graham, good luck to you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us this morning. <laughs>